Hi, I'm Lee Partridge, and welcome back to Coal UTV for another packed midweek show. We'll be uh, looking at the game against Carlisle and getting some reaction as well. We'll look ahead to the Northampton game and also a connection between Forrester Park Golf Club and Colchester United Football Club. As I'm sure you're well aware, with the departure of Matt Bloomfield, I'm joined in the studio with uh, Robbie Cowling, Colchester chairman. Thanks for joining us, Robbie. Hi, Lee. Um, happened very quickly. Um, the Matt Bloomfield situation. Can you tell us a bit of background on that and how it happened? Yeah, so it did happen very, very quickly. I mean, it was Monday, four o'clock. I first got a call from the owner of Wickham Wanderers asking me for permission to speak to Matt. Um, I didn't see any point in not giving permission. You know how football works, if yeah. people are going to do somewhere. And I felt it was only right to give Matt the opportunity to speak to Wickham. So he then spoke to him the next day. And it was about half 11 the following day that Matt called me just to let me know that he was going to take them up on their offer. So, yes, it was, it was, <laughs> it was certainly very, very quick. Uh, um, when something like that happens, you know, when you're speaking to Matt, did you, did you try and persuade him to stay? You know, how does that go? Yeah, so not directly. I didn't right. call Matt and say, look, you're going to speak to them. This is, this is, I didn't try saying these are the pros for Colchester United against the pros at Wickham Wanderers. All right. So, but what I do think is that every day he would have been with us from when he joined, we would have been telling him that. He was always made to feel welcome. He was always given everything we committed to at the interviews and more. So, you know, with the players we brought in, with all the work we did. So, yeah, every day we, we made Matt know that he was wanted at Colchester United. So I didn't feel the need that I had to go and then try to sell the club that he would have known all about at that point. So, so and, no. And you, you're quite relaxed, matter of fact, about it, I suppose. You've been in the game and involved in football a, a long time. Do you get upset or angry about these things? No, no, not at all. Depending how it's done, I suppose. Yeah, I think a lot of it depends how it's done. You can go back to some history we had, you know, <laughs> before yeah. where where I did get upset and it wasn't done correctly. But in this case, Wickham had every right to approach us, you know, to, to want to approach Matt. They did it the right way. It's not always done like that in football. That's That, that was a refreshing the way that they did it. So I respect Wickham for that. Well done then. And, and also with Matt, he did nothing wrong. He's an ambitious young manager. He, you know, he, he wants to move on. He's got a lot of history with Wickham, so it was always a chance that he would want to go back there. I think he played every single one of his professional games for Wickham Wanderers, you know, on what was quite a long and decent career. So, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm not upset with the way they acted. I genuinely wish Wickham well and I wish Matt well were there. And, uh, you know, back to us, uh, we know football's an ever-changing world and uh, you've been in a situation where you've been looking for head coaches before uh, Matt done has done a good job here with us, but also the players that come in in the last window, you know, they've also had an impact on position, performance, and uh, results. Um, how does the process go about now looking for a new head coach? And do you think personally we are a more attractive proposition now than maybe what we have been in the past? Yes, I think the fact of how much my phone and everyone else's phone's been ringing this time around compared to last time around has certainly shown that the club are in a much, much better position than it was. So, listen, we had really good applicants apply last time, but the quality and quantity already this time has surpassed that. So I think what people can... what Anybody looking to come and manage Colchester are going to do their homework. You know, they're not... They're going to they're gonna look at our squad. They're going to look at the stats and the way we play football and our league position. And I think if you compare now to last time, the league position's a lot better. The squad that we've invested in, you know, we bought a number of players that were playing in League One into into our squad, and we've seen we've seen the benefits of that. So, so yeah, Colchester's a much much better proposition than it than it was. And also, a situation that's arose like this happened very quickly, and a lot of clubs now, most clubs, I guess, have personnel in place for player recruitment. Is this just another reason why that's so important, and you don't just have a manager? choosing what players he wants because a manager can go as quick as a player can go. Yeah, I think the game's moved on a lot. So there's certainly not the time in the modern game for managers to be out every night watching players and doing all the recruitment themselves anyway. So it's it's a lot of process. There's a lot of data to look at and, and uh, we want to look into the character. So there's a lot of work goes into the recruitment. But absolutely, you've always got to recruit what's best for the club and... and have that philosophy of the way you want, you know, the club wants to play. So we're always doing that sort of recruitment. That's got to align with the manager as well. You know what I mean? So 
there's no point having a manager that's not going to suit the players that you get in and, and the way you go. So, yeah, the, the days when the, the managers did all of the recruitment itself is, is long gone. And it's important that the club are bringing players in that's going to, and can, can bring another first team coach in that can slot in quite easily to what we've got as long as they come in with a similar philosophy and, and a way of playing the game. And also, um, the new head coach. To come into a club playing in League Two that's got the training facilities and also the academy that we've got, you know, that's got to be something that a, a, a manager or a coach is attracted to. Yeah, the, the, as I say, Colchester is an attractive proposition. So we always do get good candidates that want to come and apply. But but like I say, it's it's so important. There's so many so many managers have got to be so careful about the job they do, you know, because let's not fool ourselves. Whoever comes into Colchester next. He's going to have the same agenda as everybody else. They want to move up in the game. Now, hopefully they can do that taking Colchester with them or taking Colchester a bit further before they move on. But we want people that are going to come, that are going to, going to be ambitious. We're a good proposition and, and attractive to a lot of people. So I expect us to have some good choices. And players, did you... Well, I understand you have spoke to the players. Um, uh, and how did that conversation go? And that was, which I mentioned earlier, Forrester Park, not Florence Park. So how, yeah. how did that conversation go? And yeah, so we, we had a day planned yesterday at um, Forrester Park, not Florence Park. Yeah. So, um, which we... I know you're going to explain a little bit more and we can talk about a bit more. But, so I was planned to go over there anyway. We had a bit of a media day there with, with things that were going on. The players were training there. And we also had um, a new golf simulator installed over there that the players were challenging some of the golf members to. So we had something planned when all this took off. So when I turned up, all the media were there, all the players um, were obviously hearing different rumours. So I wanted to address them quickly and explain to them exactly what was going on. So, I mean, one of the main message I had for the players is really quite simple, is that the Matt had done a good job for us. But the main reason that we've progressed in recent months is because what's happened on the pitch. Yeah. It's the results that we get that matter, and it's the players that are ultimately responsible for those results. So uh, just to explain to them, you know, we're grateful for what they've done. They're still with us. There's no reason why we can't continue in the same vein because we've got those same players. Uh, absolutely. Um, and Forrester Park, we've mentioned it a couple of times. Can you tell us what the connection now is between Forrester Park Golf Club yeah. and uh, here at Colchester United Football Club? Yes, yeah, so um, about, I'm trying to think how many months ago it was now. It was a few months, at least six months ago. I'm forgetting uh, my, own, my own thoughts at the moment. But um, I bought the golf course, so I bought Forrester Park. Now, the main reason I bought it is it's a fantastic location. It's um, not far from the current training ground, just maybe three miles from the current training ground. And it's set in a fantastic area where I would like us to build a new and bigger and even better training ground. Right. So I know our training ground is not very old. I know a lot of people say, you know, it's a great training ground. You're lucky to have it. And we are. But there's an opportunity for us to um, remove some of the negatives about Florence Park, because there are some, and to build something even even bigger and better. Uh, and uh, can we say why Florence Park might not be as suitable going forward as what it is now? Or Yeah, I mean, the, thing, the problem that we've got at Florence Park is we've got a lot of restrictions, planning restrictions. So a, a perfect example would be we can't start training there in the summer until the 1st of July, OK? So this year, because of um, the extra weeks that we needed to do, because everyone came in early this year because of um, the World Cup, we had two weeks where we couldn't actually use our training ground to train on, So, which, which is crazy. We had a perfectly good training ground. Wasn't, al wasn't allowed to actually use it to go and use any of the pitches or do any of the training on. If you look at the weekend, we can't have matches played on there after one o'clock. So we're dragging teams like Bristol and Cardiff and everyone down to play under 18s games there that have to be finished by one o'clock. So it's forcing them to have overnight stays. And it, it's just not as practical as it could be. We're never going to get floodlights there if we really want to improve that or a 3G pitch. There's no point putting a 3G pitch down without floodlights. Yeah, of course. So... Um, yeah, so it's a great training ground. We're lucky to have it, but we need something even better. Watch. We're a bit fragmented. Our dome is somewhere else, you know, yeah. so it's a bit fragmented and we could have a really super training ground in one place with a golf course next to it <laughs> and a really good facility, again, which can be really attractive to bring players down to us. And uh, watch this space. Um, 
Uh, back to um, football on the pitch, a narrow defeat against Carlisle. Bearing in mind, Carlisle we're looking for automatic promotion at the moment. Um, we've got Northampton this weekend, and another side that are looking for promotion. Your thoughts on how the season has been so far and the, the rest of the season? Yeah, I mean, it's been an interesting season. I mean, a lot of the games are almost coin flip games. There's not a lot between them. You know, it seems that in this league, there's not a lot between teams box to box. It's what's going on in the boxes. I think what we've seen in recent weeks with the influx of some of the players that we've brought in is we've made less mistakes in our own box. Sadly, not against Carlisle. That was the only difference between the two teams, sadly. But um, we've certainly cut out a lot of the errors in one box and we're taking opportunities in the other box. So it, it's been a very, very close league. So, but we've certainly seen that we are making progress. That's, that's been for some time now. You know, there's, there's quite a few of the games we go into. Um, I think for a while we deserved a bit more than we were getting out of them. There's maybe a couple of games we've got a little bit more than we deserved in recent times. But uh, yeah, it's close. If Carlisle are a team that are currently fighting for automatic promotion, mm -hmm. I think we, we match them easily. Yeah, really should have got more out of that game. Let's hope we uh, do it against Northampton. Uh, thanks for coming in. Join us here no in the studio and we'll catch up before the end of the season. OK, thank uh, you, Lee. As Rob mentioned about Forest Apart, and the lads were there yesterday training and having a little bit of fun while they was there. Let's take a look at how that went.
good day there for the lads. And thanks to all those at Forrester Park uh, who made that possible and also to the lads that were involved in the challenges. I'm sure we get to see a bit more of the golf club and the studio over the next few weeks and months. But let's get back to the football and let's take a look back at the encounter against Carlisle at the weekend. It was a closely fought match. We'll see the highlights and then we'll get the thoughts of Tommy Smith afterwards. Um, well, welcome back. Obviously, it's a defeat, but it's, it's just one incident in, in 94 minutes of football that's ended up costing you. Yeah, yeah, and obviously the small margins in football that mean you win games or lose games. And unfortunately, we were on the wrong end of one of those today. But you know, I thought we reacted to that goal really positively and sort of took the game to them from that point onwards. They had one more chance after that when we were chasing the game towards the end. But... It's one of those games where we needed a half chance to drop for us or a ricochet and we just didn't get that little bit of luck that we perhaps needed. And in fairness, it nearly did at the end. There were, there were two, or th two or three sort of nearly things towards the end and, and for a side who were in third position, they, they did sort of try to sit back and soak it up, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, and that's testament to how far we've come as a group over the last few months, you know, to, to put a team that's in the automatic promotion places under that much pressure, albeit we didn't get anything from the game, of course, but... No, it's definitely positive to take from it. Could, could you sense that on, on the field, that maybe they were quite happy to settle for what they'd got? I think so. After the result they had the other night, yeah. obviously they were probably uh, just desperate not to concede more goals. So, And obviously when you're 1-0 up, it's easy to try and sit back and sort of counter-attack rather than take the game to the opposition. So uh, it was always going to be tough for us to break them down in that regard. But like I said, we had a couple of half chances that on another day would have gone in for us. It wasn't to be today. Just, just watching after the goal went in, which was obviously an unfortunate individual error. Sometimes you might expect an inquest after that, but everyone just seemed to seem to get on with things and accept it. It's a group effort. Yeah, of course. Listen, uh, everyone makes mistakes in games. He didn't mean to do that. No. You know, he's, he's made a technical mistake that any one of us could make. I know I've made mistakes in my career in the past that have led to goals, and it's how you bounce back and recover from that. And I thought he did really well in that regard because it's easy to perhaps go under if you make a mistake that costs a goal like that but he reacted really well and for the rest of the game I thought he performed admirably and as we say there were, there were bits and pieces towards the end last 10 minutes it did seem like obviously everyone tries to tries to eat up the clock but there's Quezzi Appio into the side netting and the effort the chance that falls to Noah Chilvers Chilvers right at the death you, you, you've almost come up with something late on which has been something that the team's had about it in the last few games yeah exactly but we don't want to sort of rely on these late goals all the time you know we need to try and get 
get them a bit earlier in games, which will give us a chance to go on and then win the game. But I thought the, the performance on the whole was, was positive. Obviously, it's a long way to come up. Uh, so we're sorry to the fans that they, we couldn't give them anything to take back. But, you know, that fantastic away run comes to an end, but we have to start another one now. What about you then? That's your first football since the 14th of January. How has it been for the last four or so weeks? Oh, it's always frustrating when you, you want to be playing football and you're not selected, but nice to be back in the team today and uh, hopefully moving forward we can get some wins on the board. And so have you had a conversation with the head coach about what you need to do to get back in or, or, or things around that? Yeah, we've had conversations, but obviously that will stay between me and, and the gaffer. Um, but yeah, we'll see how this goes. Obviously, there's been a couple of injuries to, to players in my position now, so it gives me an opportunity to play. Obviously, it's never nice to see teammates get injured, but you know, it gives me a chance to come back into the team and hopefully stake my claim for a place again. That's what professionalism is about, isn't it? Though you, you, you keep doing your work and you know an opportunity will come. Yeah, of course. That's football. You know, it's a squad game as well, so you're not going to play every minute of every game, and you know, it's how you sort of react to that. You know, we've got a, a big squad now, um, a lot of good players within that squad. And and it's reflected in the results that we've had over the last couple of months and we've been moving up the table nicely and it's about keeping that squad as close knit as possible and as together as we can. And in fairness, that, that run started while you were while you were in the team. You haven't had to sit by and, and watch the improvement. It, it came while you were in the team, but you, you must be pleased and delighted with the, with the upturn in, in fortunes and results. Yeah, of course, you know, you never it's never nice to be to be fighting for those bottom two places. You know, you, you want to be pushing up the league as, as far as you can and obviously it's been a disappointing start to this season. Um, um, but obviously since since the gaffer has come in, there has been that upturn in form, obviously change of personnel playing wise as well, which has given everyone a lift and hopefully that continues until the end of the season. Thoughts from Tommy Smith there after a tightly contested game, losing uh, by the odd goal in a game. Apart from that, I think you both agree there was nothing much to choose between the two sides and considering Carlisle are pushing for automatic promotion, a good performance from the lads. Northampton come to the JobServe Community Stadium to play at the weekend. So let's take a look back at our last win over the Cobblers from 2019. A good win and a clinical penalty from Nuke Loris there. Another performance like that we're hoping for and three points, of course, come Saturday afternoon. You can get your tickets for the weekend's game online and you can cheer on the use at the JobServe Community Stadium. I'll be back with the pre-match interviews on Saturday. But until then, have a great week, whatever you're up to. It's goodbye for now.